Hello everyone and welcome back to my KSP tutorial series in Kerbal Space Program 0.90 Beta. In this episode I hope to build a craft that can complete these two crew reports because uh, we now have a larger limit on our launch pad though we still have a part limit in our VAB so that's a little bit tricky. Uh, so I'll have to figure out how to manage that but perhaps we can build a craft that will be suited to do both of these crew reports and thereby complete this contract. So that's my goal for today. But uh, before that, I have one thing to discuss, and that is how to calculate delta V for transfers. But let's go to the VAB first, and then I'll start talking about that. So I've sort of been remiss. I've, I've told you how to calculate delta V that you have, but I haven't told you how to calculate the delta V that you need. And so I hope to remedy that uh, here today, and I have prepared some slides. Uh, so in order to uh, calculate this, so the... Delta V you have is calculated using the rocket equation. Uh, for transfers, uh, not including inclination change, the delta V you need is calculated using what's called the vis viva equation. So, a uh, fancy name, uh, Latin in fact. But, uh, yeah, so that's the second most important equation you're going to want to know. Uh, assuming you can't use maneuver nodes, which we can't right now, so... Uh, of course, maneuver nodes will calculate the delta V for you using this equation. Uh, so that's handy, but uh, if you don't have the maneuver nodes, then you need to be able to calculate this. And uh, with it, you can go anywhere. In fact, uh, you can calculate any transfer you like. Um, but first, we need to have one concept down, and that's semi-major axis. Uh, with our orbits, we have a periapsis and apoapsis. We need some sort of average, and basically that average is the semi-major axis. You add up your periapsis and apoapsis, and also the radius of the planet. Uh, so it's actually the distance from the center of the planet or sun or whatever you're orbiting. So uh, the closest distance uh, to the center of the planet or sun, and then the farthest distance from the planet or sun, and then you average those two out. So you see two versions of the equation there. You see uh, A being the semi-major axis equals to uh, periapsis plus radius plus apoapsis plus radius divided by 2. Or you can just take the radius out because there's two of them and you're dividing by 2. So then A equals the radius of the planet or sun plus the average of your periapsis and apoapsis. Okay, so that's your semi-major axis. That'll be handy for lots of things, but it's essential for this particular equation. The next concept I want to talk about is gravitational parameter. This, this occurs in all sorts of things. If you've ever taken a physics class, you've seen this before in, uh, in the gravity equations. Gravita uh, gravitational parameter is often written as mu, the Greek letter mu, but it's also written as gm, and I prefer gm. So, but anyway, um, mu or gm is the, uh, the gravitational constant, which is 6.67 times 10 to 11, times the mass of whatever you're orbiting. Okay. So for Kerbin, the GM is 3.53 times 10 to the 12th. And for Earth, it's about 100 times that, 3.98 times 10 to the 14th. So you see that even though the acceleration due to gravity on the surface of Earth is the same as on the surface of Kerbin, because Kerbin is so, so much smaller, the gravitational parameter is 100 times less for Kerbin than for Earth. Okay? And that's the key. That... That's very important for figuring out the orbits around the planets, as we'll soon see. Uh, you can find the gravitational parameters for all KSP planets at wiki.kerbalspaceprogram.com, or you can calculate for yourself based on what I'm going to talk about next, which is the vis viva equation. Okay, the vis viva equation is the velocity squared. Uh, so this is so delta v had uh, delta v as the thing on the left hand side. Here we're calculating velocities. So velocity squared equals to the gravitational parameter times, uh, and all this in bracket, 2 over r, where r is your altitude above the center of the central body, so altitude plus the radius, minus 1 over the semi-major axis. Okay, so if your orbit is perfectly circular, what this ends up being is actually v squared equals gm over r. So it's much simpler for a circular orbit. This is the general uh, situation where you don't have a circular orbit. And in that case, you have uh, this uh, other term, 1 over a, to deal with. 
So, yeah, but that's the full thing. We need the 1 over A part now because we're going to be talking about how to calculate the delta V for transfers, and a transfer orbit is not going to be circular. Uh, if you're in a circular orbit, you're not transferring to anything. Okay, so let's do an example. Uh, you see an example there. We're starting at a 120 kilometer altitude, and the orbit is 200 by 100 kilometers. So it's a slightly eccentric orbit, so it's not a circular orbit. And we are at 120 kilometers, so we're not at the periapsis or at the apoapsis. Uh, Kerbin's radius is 600 kilometers, so 600,000 meters. We have to do everything in meters because the constants have meters. The constants do not have kilometers. And so GM is written as uh, in terms of meters. So 3.5316 times 10 to the 12th is our gravitational parameter. And the radius is, uh, the, the R, is uh, the actual altitude plus Kerbin's radius, which is, so both of those combined is 720 kilometers. Our semi-major axis is Kerbin's radius plus the average of our periapsis and apoapsis. The average of our per periapsis and apoapsis is 150 kilometers. You can see there between 200 and 100 kilometers. So we get uh, 750 kilometers for A, so 750,000 meters. Okay, so once we have R and A, we can plug it into the vis viva equation, and you can see the uh, solution steps for V there. And uh, it's, it's a lot easier with a graphing calculator. Uh, I do this with a graphing calculator. It'd be really annoying with a normal calculator because of uh, all the steps. But with a graphing calculator, you can type out the entire thing at one go instead of doing it step by step. And so uh, it ends up being a lot easier. Uh, by the entire thing, I mean the whole string where it says v squared equals 3.53 times 10 to the 12th bracket uh, 2 divided by 720,000 minus 1 divided by 750,000. All of that can be written in at one go. So that's why I even bother to do this. Anyway, uh, so you see at the end there, we get a velocity of 2,258.58 meters per second. So that would be our velocity in orbit. Okay, so that's great, but uh, Kerbal Space Program, we, we can find out our velocity in, in orbit pretty easily. We, we can see that written on our dashboard. So that's not too bad. That's not too important. Uh, but if we were planning ahead, if we're going to say we're going to get into this orbit, and then we're going to transfer, and we're doing that all from the VAB. This would be handy. Now, how do we transfer? So let's say we're going to make a transfer to the moon. Uh, I'm going to assume that our periapsis is right where our altitude uh, was calculated. So in the previous example, we calculated our altitude based on 120 kilometers. So I'll assume that's our new periapsis. That's where we're going to start burning. So that'll be our minimum point. Our apoapsis will be the altitude of the moon above Kerbin, which is 11,400 kilometers. We're going to take Kerbin's radius into account separately, so we're not doing 12,000. We're doing 11,400 now. Okay, so that's our new apoapsis. We're going to just touch the orbit of the moon. Okay, so the R is the same because uh, we're starting off in the same position as in the previous example, but our semi-major axis is different. Now we're going to have a semi-major axis with that huge 11,400,000 11, uh, 11, meter uh, altitude apoapsis there. And so once you crunch all the numbers, you get a semi-major axis of 6,360,000 meters. Okay, so that's our new A. And this ends up being really tiny fractions in the vis viva equation, but they're all multiplied by a really huge gravitational parameter. So you see there, v squared equals 3.53 times 10 to the 12th. And then in the brackets, uh, 2 over the radius, uh, 720 kilometers, minus 1 over the semi-major axis, uh, 6,360 uh, 6, kilometers. And our final velocity ends up being 3,042.16 meters per second. So that's the velocity we need in order to lift our, peri uh, our apoapsis to 11,400 kilometers. Okay, so that's what we need to be going at. 
okay uh not not the additional amount you see we already had two uh two thousand two hundred and fifty eight meters per second we already calculated that that's the speed we're going at in the orbit so now that we know we need to be going at three thousand forty two we can subtract our existing velocity from that and we end up with a resulting velocity needed as seven hundred eighty three point five eight meters per second um no i think i've got the Anyway, 783 meters per second, let's just say. Okay, so 783 meters per second. It's important to note that I can't see the slides right now. I'm actually using my notes and my sloppy handwriting. So, uh, yeah. All right, so 783 meters per second is what we need in order to transfer to the moon from that orbit, from the 200 by 100 meter, uh, kilometer orbit. So we already had a uh, slightly higher than usual apoapsis in that orbit. Okay, and so that's how you calculate it. If you were calculating from Kerbin to Duna, you would have the Sun as your central body, and you would just calculate from Kerbin's uh, altitude above the Sun to Duna's altitude above the Sun, and so Kerbin's altitude above the Sun will be your periapsis, and Duna's altitude above the Sun will be your apoapsis, and of course First, you'd have to escape Kerbin, and I, I, I think we'll leave escape. Uh, escape velocity is just uh, square root of two times your current velocity if you're in a circular orbit, but uh, that's the easy way of figuring it out. So just do square root of two times your current velocity if you're in a circular orbit and you've got your escape velocity. Very simple. I'm not even going to create a slide for it. Okay, so that's that. Time to move on to creating our vessel to land, not land to do the visual surveys around the moon. Okay, so we're going to have to do some inclination changes in order to get to these places and those are going to cost uh, quite a bit of uh, juice. By the way, the the VSPV equation doesn't help you with inclination changes and so what I usually do is, I don't know if it's how you calculate the inclination changes or not, uh, but the shortcut I use is just my current velocity times sine of the angle that I need to change by. I don't know if that's how you do it, but it's a reasonable approximation and it usually gives me the buffer I need, so it's not underestimating, I don't think. So so that's what I use, so uh, whatever the angle is, sine of the angle times your velocity. Okay, we've got this new engine here, and that's one of my favorite engines. The reason why it's one of my favorite engines is because you see here, uh, this has a thrust of 50 and a mass of 0.5 you divide those into each other, so 50 divided by 0.5 is 100. So it's got a thrust to weight ratio of 100, a uh, thrust to mass ratio of 100. And uh, here we've got 30 divided by 0.1, so its thrust to mass ratio is 300. So it's uh, much better in terms of its mass and its thrust, and some people think that's overdoing it a bit too, uh, frankly speaking. It's actually, I think it's the best one in the game. I'm not entirely sure about that. But uh, it's pretty high. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to add a decoupler here. Let's. So I need to stage with that engine. This has 30 thrust. This is about one ton. I'd say that I can get one of these on if I need trouble. Now again, we need to somehow limit how much, how many parts we have because we still have a part limit of 30. But we do need solar panels. I'm gonna slap on two, I think. We'll keep them on the pod. Okay. I don't think we need the batteries because uh, we've got 50 electric. Well, no, we will because uh, we. Well, no, we're just doing visual surveys. We're not doing science. So yeah, uh, strictly speaking, we want to keep this trim. So I don't want to do. Uh, any other stuff, and so I'm not carrying on any other science with me. Tempted to unlock this one now. This one has gimbling, very, very important. And now that we have a larger limit, that might be essential for control. Because the larger you've got a rocket, the less the pod zone torque will help you out. I think I will. So I'm unlocking the LVT-45. I'm going to make it my center engine. 
let me calculate what sort of, uh, what, well, how many parts do we have? 16. Let me calculate what sort of delta V I have right now. And I'll come back to you with that. Okay, so right now I have 6,709 according to my calculations in three stages. The top stage has the best with 3,046, then 1,489 here and 2,174 here. But uh, this stage is not going to have a thrust weight ratio of 1. And so if we do it like this right now, uh, this probably won't make it into orbit, or at least it'll struggle, because it won't be able to make uh, the burn in time. Uh, in fact, you'll have to go all the way to this third stage. So I'm envisioning using side boosters, but if I'm going to use side boosters, I really want struts. Uh, just to keep things nice and stable, right? I mean, in theory, this is okay, but let me take a look at the tech tree for a sec. Oh, hold on, let me save this. Uh, what are we at right now? Okay, let me check the tech tree. So, um, here, here we've got... Well, we have enough science for them. We've got radial decouplers, strut connectors, and launch stability enhancers. I think I should go for that now. And I'll, I'll get the struts, I'll get the radial decouplers, and I'll get the launch stability enhancers. Costs a bundle, but I think it'll be worth it. All right. Okay, so I'm going to add side boosters here. And these will be the non-gimbling ones, I believe. Probably better that way. I just want two for now. We'll keep the... Uh, uh, the contract is pretty lucrative, so I'm not too worried about cost. But probably should just keep it down. We have a nose cone. Not really. Don't even have a decent looking parachute, actually. They got to be open-ended. Yuck. I really don't like not having anything, but then again, I just didn't unlock anything like that. And of course, it's not strictly necessary, it's just aesthetics. So, so my fault. Of course, I could put pods, but that's expensive stuff. I don't want to pay for that. Now, I'm going to have fuel lines feeding in. So we're going to have it like this. And that way what's going to happen is this engine isn't going to use any of its own fuel here. It's actually going to draw fuel from these two first. And then once those two are out of fuel, uh, they'll drop off and this engine will continue burning. Okay, and... Uh-oh. Ah, too many parts. Uh, could unlock this bigger fuel tank. Yeah, I guess we'll have to. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, so let me uh, rebuild this with the yeah, let's just rebuild everything with the b bigger fuel tanks okay, well that gets us to 30 parts let me calculate the delta V on this, now when calculating the delta V, uh, remember thrust doesn't come into play in delta V, only the ISP and the amount of fuel you have and then the mass so what we're going to do is we're going to have the total mass, uh, 42.3, and then just the fuel in these two side boosters will be counted as the first stage. And then we'll calculate a second stage with the fuel here, and then so forth. So it'll be a four-stage calculation. Okay, I get an extra 2,072 meters per second from these other ones. I'm using a conservative estimate for my ISP since they're launching from the ground. I use 330. Uh, their minimum is 320, maximum is 370. So I use 330 for this one, I use 340 for the center here, and then the maximum values, the vacuum values for these two. Um, I'd like to put struts here. Like I'd like to put struts all over the place, but um, I don't see that happening right now. I've put a lot of launch clamps uh, just in case. I don't want to take any risks, but I am taking a risk by not putting more struts. We'll have to see how that pans out. Okay, now I want to fix up staging here. Okay. So, who do we have now? Chadger seems like he needs some experience. So Chadger Kerman gets his first launch. 
Uh, oh, I did say... No, I didn't need batteries because I'm not going to be transmitting any science. Okay, so that's the plan. Alright. Alright, let's go. There's always a sense of trepidation. The moon's right there. I think we could just make our transfer direct. Let's try that. SAS on, throttle is up, and light, and launch. Very good. We should be rotationally good, so no problem there. Chagger looks fine. TWR is pretty pretty strong here. Once we get to 100 meters per second, I might throttle back a bit. Maybe I should just wait. I'll, I'll get into orbit first, and then I'll wait until we see another moon rise in order to actually make the burn. Okay, booster set. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Then place the little uh, separate uh, oh, decoupler is in the right place. What did they just do? Anyway, we need to point a little bit more like 30 degrees now. So maybe I should try to get into a 100 by 200 orbit and see what my velocity is at 120 kilometers. I'm not going to force that issue, but if I can, I guess I went as well. I think the calculation said 2258. Okay, well, that's pretty close to 100 by 200. Let's see what our velocity is at 120. Okay, uh, well, uh, 2259, but that's probably because I'm not exactly in uh, 100 by 200 orbit, but it was it said 2258, so there you have it. Now, our electric charge is diminishing on the dark side of the planet. Uh, this engine actually does recharge the battery, but I can just do that to stop the electric charge, uh, but we don't have much juice in it. Now, all we need to do is wait until the moon appears above the horizon, which should be once again close to above the KSC. Oh, there's the moon. Okay, so our orbital velocity is lower, so we will be burning probably uh, more than 800 meters per second. Our calculation was for 2258 meters per second orbital velocity, and that one got us to 780. Okay, that's the end of that stage. So we should be getting close to the moon's orbit now. Okay, so again, not in the same place. I actually have a little bit of an inclination with respect to the moon. But that should do it. Okay. So this is from 142, and it, uh, it was a lot less than 3042. So uh, there's a big variation depending on where your, the star of your burn is going to be. It's pretty sensitive to that. Should have dumped the mob. I always forget... To to dump the mod propellants. So yeah, you can see here our velocity going down, altitude going up. Uh, this is just uh, vis viva equation calculation here. Okay, here we go. Ooh, crash course as usual. Uh, moon or SOI. Our inclination is not bad for hitting our targets. So I'm not going to correct inclination.
Wow, we have to do quite a long burn in order to lift this up. We are very, very crashy. Let's go to 20 meters, uh, 20 kilometers. Okay, gotta focus on the moon so I can see these a little bit better. Looks like this will be a good inclination to hit that one. Okay. So, um, incidentally, when we do this uh, getting into orbit around the moon burn, what we're really doing in principle is lifting. You can uh, still pretend that we have a periapsis around Kerbin, so we've got an orbit like this. And what we really need to do is lift the periapsis up to the orbit of the moon. And in principle, you can do that calculation and you should get something reasonable for the estimation of how much you need to burn to match the moon's velocity in order to get into orbit. You can, there are more precise calculations, but uh, the VSVV equation can still handle this one. I'm going to be focusing just on our, our mission. I'm not going to try and have him do EVAs all over the place. Now, since I think we are in a pretty good inclination for these things, uh, it looks like we're even better for this one than that one. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'll get into a rather tighter orbit so that they don't uh, float away. Well, because I, I want to be flying over them at a reasonable height, right? Yeah. Okay. So let me time warp to this point here. And I'm going to turn my orbit a little bit south and also drop it in a bit. Going to take a risk. So my periapsis is now crashing into the moon. And I realize that. But this is a risk I am going to take. I'll lift it up again later. Okay. I think we're on a good trajectory to hit this one. I'm going to set it as a target now. Looking at where the target is on the nav ball, looks like we're approaching it. Got to avoid the whole crashy crashy thing though. Nope. Okay. I need to lift my orbit now. Oh, oh, oh wait, wait, wait. Jeez, Louise. Okay, crew port. Did I get that done? Ah, oh, come on. Okay, well, I, I don't know what happened there, but uh, let's get uh, ourselves situated. This is not a good situation. But I did the, the, but, hmm. Oh, it says below. It doesn't say above. I thought it said above. It says below 8,500 meters. Okay. Well then, that's a little bit more complicated. We're still on the LV-909 stage, so that's good. Not much fuel in it, though. But we've got 3,000 delta V in the top stage, so plenty of room for maneuvers for Chagger here. So I've got 15,000 here, and then once I get over here, I'm going to drop it down so that I can skim along that surface. Okay. I think we'll be about 8,000 around there, hopefully. I'm going to be pointing straight up in order to... Uh, ensure that I can get away from the surface just in case. We might still be high. I'm going to retro burn a little bit to get down. In terms of Delta V, I'm, this thing is really overkill for this mission, but better safe than sorry. And of course it allows us to reuse this for other types of missions. We're going to be pretty close on the altitude issue. Just 
just gonna wait patiently in this view okay alright so that's satisfied I can reset that now we need to uh, quickly adjust our orbits because we are not in a safe path here <laughs> that's it telling me I just made orbit again alright let's get into a safer one though okay so now we will have to change inclination to hit this one skimming along the surface of the moon uh, come on let's go to free camera here there we go we're still on the LV-909 stage this is impressive maybe we should uh, sojourn to Minmus I should look for a contract for that Okay, but uh, first let me just make sure we are, we are okay here. Oh, that's the end of that stage. All right. So, finally, decouple. Yay. And, yeah, I just want to get a good look at this place. Has to be above though, so we can't uh, go too low. Okay, entering the zone. Crew report. And yes, all done. Okay, well, the contract's all complete. We've got lots of funds, lots of science, lots of, lots of reputation. Chadger is uh, happy as can be. Do I risk doing EVAs? I guess so. Uh, yep. Let's let's EVA him. Oh, we've already done this one. Seems like pointing down is a good thing. Doesn't seem to change the camera as much. Let's get over here. Oh no, he floated. He floated. <sighs> Do the EV report. Keep the data. Boy, get your lights on. Okay, Midland's in. Hi, this thing. Uh, l let me leave him in orbit for a sec. I think he's in a safe orbit. Let me uh, check on contracts. We can't do planet flag on the moon. Science data from around Kerbin. Hmm. Around Mimus. Visual surveys, these are all below. That's tough. And I, I think I've done enough visual surveys for one episode. Honestly, at this point, I just want to bring him back. Alright, let's just bring him back and uh, call it an episode after that. Okay, so we do have ridiculous amounts of Delta V here. That's a bit unfortunate. Could try and make a soft landing on the moon. Yes, I know. I, I could uh, do all sorts of things with 3000 Delta V. Um, but I'm getting a little bit tired myself. It's not a matter of Delta V issue. I want to bring this guy back. And we've got the vehicle. So if you want to send one out again, it's only like 22,000 funds. It's pretty cheap. Nope, oh, nope, not an escape orbit yet. Okay, well that is an escape orbit. Okay, here we are. And as usual, I'm going to go around the full orbit before pulling our orbit in at the apoapsis. Should also unlock being able to uh, get more than two contracts each time. 
Uh, I think that only costs like 48,000 funds. So then we'll have the ability to rack up a lot more contracts on each mission. In general, I don't like to do things that I haven't already planned for in a mission. So if I plan to do something in a mission, I take care of that. I don't try and do too many other things. I don't like getting distracted. What we will do here is we'll get into an orbit around Kerbin and try to land close to the KSC. So rather than going a straight down pass, we'll do an arrow breaking pass. And I'm not looking at air breaking calculator, but I think 35.8 should be fine. Where are we exactly? Ah, well, with KSC will be in darkness. I think I can plant flags right now. I should uh, plant a flag to indicate the position of KSC now. Now that I have that ability. I think we still have a thrust to weight ratio. Well, it's just about one right now. Okay, going up now. And. Oh, it did a reasonable amount of work there. But I think I can uh, retro burn a little bit more to help it out. Now, I was a little bit north of the KSC, so I'm going to have to tilt south. But tilting south means from here tilting north, and I'll also lift my periapsis a bit, so that it's a nice stable orbit for now. Okay, now the little peninsula should be around here, so I'm going to wait until I'm over there and then I've got to bring the orbit down based on that. Well, that should be pretty safe. And then we'll have to retro burn beyond that. Hmm, we're going down a little bit faster than I want to. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. None of that now. The beauty of having oodles of Delta V. So we're clearly not re entering retrograde here. We're doing something completely different. Okay, it looks like we need to be further south. Oh, mighty torque. That's probably our remnant launch clamps. Let's keep the surface velocity here. Up, oh, we're going up. Don't need to do that. Well, it's a very valiant attempt, but I think it's not got too much more to go here. All right, well, that's the end of that. Just a tiny little capsule now. And parachute. Uh, I really hate service module explosions right before parachute deployment. Very scary. We seem to be above ground at about 250 meters altitude. Uh, the, the ground, the surface altitude. Okay, on the ground, safely. Let's recover. And there it is, Jagger Kerman returned home safely, bringing back, uh, uh, oh, recovery of a vessel returned from suborbital flight on the moon, got us some science, as well as EVA report from space above the Midlands. Uh, we could have done more, but uh, don't worry, we'll have other opportunities. 97.2% uh, on recovery from 16.4 kilometers away from the KSC, 
Only the top capsule, really, though. And the panels. Uh, Chagger Kremen got a lot of uh, experience, uh, reached level 1. And we fulfilled the most ambitious contract we've taken yet. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, that settles it. Uh, I think that will do it for me for this episode. So, with that, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.